me tell you about the monitors that we've selected for our control room. There's a, a range of monitors from our smallest bookshelf type monitor, mid-range type monitor, and that doesn't have to do with frequency response, it just kind of means middle-sized monitor, and then our main monitor. And each of these are a stereo pair. Why so many speakers, some people might ask. Well, you need to listen to music that you produce in a variety of monitors simply so that you can know how the mix will translate when somebody goes and plays it in a club or someone plays it at home on their bookshelf speakers or someone uses relatively good sounding monitors. So what these monitors are designed to do is to uh, illuminate all of the in intricacies of the sound that will present themselves in different scenarios. So you gotta make sure that you reach some sort of compromise where the music doesn't sound good on only one of these sets of speakers, but it sounds good on all three. And that's what takes the, the, the time when you're mixing. So the first set of speakers we use is the NS10s. These are not particularly flat frequency response, which means that they're not scientifically accurate, but they're probably the most popular brand of audio monitors that you find in commercial studios. And they've sort of set the standard for what people expect when they walk into a studio. These are sort of like, a, a, you know, almost like a must have for a lot of producers. They need to hear on a pair of NS10s. They've been around for that long. They don't have great bass frequency response. So we have these JBL high Q uh, net speakers. And they call it net because these speakers are actually networked together with ethernet cables. And they run on a piece of software made by JBL, um, which allows these speakers to tune themselves to the room that they're placed in. So in the software, you can put in the dimensions of your control room, the height, depth, and everything like that. You can place the speakers in your virtual room, and then the speakers will time align themselves and correct their frequency response based on where they're placed in your room. So that saves you a heck of a lot of time, and it's also very um, effective. Thirdly, we have uh, uh, Apogee main monitor system with bi amp speakers. So we have a, a subwoofer, um, two mid range drivers, and a horn. And the mid range drivers and the horn are run off of one amplifier. There's a crossover, and the uh, sub is run on another amplifier. These are not the most highly accurate monitors. No humongous monitors this size are, generally speaking, perfectly accurate. But they give you an idea of what your music will sound like at absurd volume which people will often listen to your music at absurd volume in like a club or something. And what I'm always listening for on these monitors or any monitors with a horn is to see if there's too much of a harshness in the mix that only really presents itself on speakers like this. So you might think, what a clean, great, sheeny treble I have going on on these really hi-fi monitors. But then when someone goes and plays it in the club, the mix will rip their head off. And you need to know that before you bounce to disc. So um, always listen to your, your mix on as many speakers as you can. And I listen to these monitors just to make sure that I don't have too much of like three, four kilohertz coming at you. Um, and then I basically treat the mix so that I get the best representation in all three of these monitors, if that's at all possible.